On the 18th of February 2003, a fire began on a subway train in the South Korean city of Daegu. A series of terrible mistakes and miscalculations would follow, which would ultimately result in the fire claiming hundreds of lives. It would later be discovered that the fire had been started deliberately, making it the single deadliest crime to ever take place in the country. Throughout the second half of the 20th century, the city of Daegu in South Korea expanded rapidly. From the end of the Korean War in 1953 to the end of the century, the population increased tenfold, putting a huge strain on the city's resources and infrastructure. In the 1980s, it was decided that an underground rapid transit system was needed to help ease the overwhelming amount of traffic on the roads. Construction started on the Daegu Metro in 1991. It was by no means a simple project. Carving out a system of subway tunnels underneath the bustling metropolitan area was fraught with danger. In 1995, several years into construction, a gas explosion killed 101 people, including 42 middle school students. This shook the city and resulted in increased safety measures for the construction of the rest of the metro system. It was a chilling reminder of how dangerous an underground rail network can be. By 2003, Line 1 of the Daegu Metro had been in operation for around six years, and had already been extended several times to reach a length of around 28.4 kilometers or 17.6 miles. At the time, Line 2 was under construction, but it would be two more years before it was ready for passengers, and four more years after that before Line 3 was added. Jungangno Station is right in the heart of the city, very close to a major shopping area. It's the second busiest station in the city, and consists of two tracks and two platforms arranged on either side of these tracks. Trains going in opposite directions pass directly alongside one another as they transit through the station. The subway trains that were used at the time were made up of six individual carriages, each of which had four sets of passenger doors on each side. These had a largely plastic interior with vinyl seating and plastic door handles. The outer casing of the train, however, was made from aluminium. Most residents of Daegu used the metro at some point in their day-to-day -day lives, whether to commute to work, attend appointments and meetings, go shopping, or to meet friends and family. One such resident was taxi driver Kim Tae-han. After suffering a stroke in 2001, Kim had found himself unable to work. Isolated and unwell, his physical and mental health had been deteriorating steadily ever since. Kim had sought help, but believed that he had been treated poorly by medical staff at a psychiatric hospital he had attended. His son later reported that Kim had felt so mistreated by staff there that he had expressed a desire to burn down the hospital. At the time, this was not a threat his son had taken seriously. On the 18th of February 2003, Kim Tae-han filled two milk cartons with gasoline and put them in a duffel bag along with a cigarette lighter. He then made his way to Panwol Tang Metro Station. The initial morning rush had calmed down by the time he boarded train 1079 at 9.45am, but the train was still very busy. Many shops in the city opened at 10.30am, and so retail workers and shoppers were just now making their way into town. Moments after the train left Pamwol Tang Station, Kim removed the gasoline-filled cartons from his bag and started trying to ignite them with the lighter. Other passengers noticed this alarming behaviour and tried to stop him. During the struggle that ensued, one of the cartons burst, spilling its contents through the carriage. As the train pulled into Jungangno Station, this spilled gasoline caught fire. Kim's legs and back were badly burned, but he and many other passengers were able to escape when the doors opened at the station. While they fled, the fire quickly spread to the other carriages. The mainly vinyl and plastic interior of the train burned easily, producing thick black smoke and toxic fumes. As this unfolded, another train entered the station from the other direction, train 1080. Despite the fire alarms sounding in the station, the fire hadn't been officially reported, 
so train 1080 pulled into the station as normal. When the driver, Trey Sangyol, reported seeing smoke, he was told by the control centre, Proceed with caution. There's a fire at Jungangno Station. This advice woefully underestimated the severity of the situation. Train 1080 caught fire almost as soon as it stopped next to train 1079. For a brief moment, the doors opened, but they were quickly shut again to prevent smoke from getting inside. This may have been done with the intention of moving the train on away from the source of the fire. However, at that moment, an automatic fire detector was activated, which shut down overhead power to both trains. Driver Trey sang Yol made an announcement advising passengers to remain calm and remain seated while he got instructions from the control center. After an agonizing delay, he was told by the control center, Quickly, get out of there, run, go up, kill the engine, and go. With no overhead power and black smoke pouring in, driver Choi sang quickly opened the doors and fled. Unfortunately, as he did so, he took the master key with him. This shut off battery power to the train as well. Many of the doors had not opened by the time he removed the key, and so became effectively locked shut. 79 passengers who had not yet escaped were sealed inside the burning train. None of them would survive. More than a thousand firefighters were quickly in attendance, but the dense toxic fumes made it impossible to access the platform to begin fighting the fire. As fleeing passengers climbed the stairs back to street level, many found themselves tripping over unseen obstacles on the stairs. It would only later become apparent that these obstacles were the bodies of those who had become lost and disoriented while looking for exits in the increasingly smoke-filled station. The fire raged for more than three hours, until it was finally extinguished around 1pm. Even then, firefighters had to wait another three hours for the toxic fumes to clear before they could approach the burned-out trains. By then, there was no hope of any survivors. Most of the bodies were so badly damaged that they could only be identified by DNA. Despite the devastating nature of the fire, in the moments before it consumed the train, some passengers were able to compose text messages to their loved ones. In most cases, these messages showed that they did not believe they would escape. Trapped below ground, they took the opportunity to say goodbye, apologize for arguments, and say sorry that they would not be coming home. The badly burned Kim Dae-han was arrested immediately, and was later indicted on multiple charges of murder and arson. He showed remorse for what he had done and was clearly suffering from mental ill health. While many families of those who had died sought the death penalty, he was instead given a life sentence, but died the following year after suffering another stroke. While Kim Tae-han had indisputably caused the disaster, many questions were asked about why it had been so deadly. In total, 192 lives had been lost, and more than 150 people had been injured. The driver of train 1080, Choi sang yeol was heavily criticised. More people died on his train than on train 1079, where the fire had begun. His mistakes had included keeping the passengers on the train for longer than necessary, and taking the master key with him when he fled. He argued that he was just following the instructions from the control centre, but was still sentenced to five years imprisonment for involuntary manslaughter. The driver of train 1079 was also sentenced to four years in prison. While he had gone to great lengths to evacuate passengers from his train, he had failed to officially report the fire. If he had done so, it might have prevented train 1080 from entering the station in the first place. The tragedy highlighted fundamental problems with the safety protocols in the subway system. Subway train drivers across the network were not trained to deal with serious fires, with many wrongly believing that the trains they drove were fireproof. The Daegu government published a white paper on the fire in 2005, which called for many changes to be made to increase safety. Across the country, subway cars which contained flammable materials were taken out of use. 
there was a nationwide ban on carrying hazardous substances on trains, and public facilities that housed more than 100 people were thereafter required to have breathing apparatus for use in an emergency. More fire extinguishers, better emergency lighting, and new signage were introduced to trains and stations as well. Line 1 remained closed for several months in the wake of the fire, but did eventually reopen, and was significantly safer for everyone who travelled on it when it finally did so. Further to this, in 2008, the Daegu Safety Theme Park was opened. This facility was designed to teach ordinary people about the importance of safety and provide realistic training to help them prepare for a range of common accidents and emergencies. This preparation paid off. In 2014, a 71-year-old man attempted to set fire to a subway train in Seoul by pouring some paint thinner on the floor. The fire was confined to a small area, and there were no casualties. It was a horrific price to pay, but the safety improvements in the country have saved many lives since the 2003 Daegu subway fire.